Okay, guys, thanks for clicking on the video. This is Season 2, Episode 4 of Empire. This was a pretty good episode. There was a lot of stuff that was going on. We start right up, right up with the feds are actually um, raiding Empire, the Empire offices. And uh, they're really, like, going all through there and carrying on. And the, uh, all while this is going on, Cookie then got wind of it because Anita Anika is over at Lush, over at Lions Dynasty, and they caught it on the internet that the feds were actually raiding there. And Cookie kind of thought it was going to be a good thing for her that they were doing that, so she got some little moves going in. Anika was actually there trying to get back with Cookie at Lions Dynasty, and um. All that's going on. Cookie's like, okay, well, we gotta go do this, that thing, and the other. And as she get ready to go out of the door, baby, the feds bust up in her place, and she's being connected, and they're raiding her place too. And not only that, they go. We see Lucius in the bed with some hoe that we don't know, and we see Thirsty, the damn crooked ass uh, lawyer. He even came up out the room. He was in the room with two twins screwing them, and um. He's waking Lucius up, telling Lucius, if the feds are at your office, they're going to be here in a minute. So he gets him on up out of the bed. And sure enough, the feds bust up in the house. They come in the house. They got a warrant. And uh, good old Roxanne is with them, uh, the DA. She come in with her titties hanging out. I don't know why this bitch's titties is always hanging out. But she come with her titties hanging out. Lucius meets her in the, hall, in the uh, hallway, butt fucking naked. He just loves to bother her, and he just makes her, you know, just stop with her mouth hanging open. And he's like, oh, Miss Roxanne Ford, thanks for coming. This that thing of just antagonizing a woman and getting on her fucking nerves. But anyway, so they do all this. They do the raid. Lucius takes his ass on down to the office. No, he ain't supposed to be there, but he comes on down there to talk to the people. And we got a... Uh, the girl who uh, actually came in and, you know, the the lesbian, the Caucasian lesbian chick with all the money that got 20% of Empire, got her. They're down there and they're all, that what they had decided was they were going to pull back on some of the things that they were doing until they could get all this under wraps. But Lucius decided, no, that's not what he wanted to do. He wanted to go full force and be militant about it. And that's what he had stopped and told her. He said, no, if the cops raid your house, then you're now known as a G. If the feds raid your house, you're known as an OG. So at that point, you have street cred. This is going to really turn the other way for Empire. It's going to make us look like we are a hard company and we got that street cred. So we're going to push forward even more vigorously than what we were. So, at that point, uh, Cookie's down there uh, as well. Cookie's like, oh, well, isn't this something? Now you and Katie Lang are the best of friends. And Karen, she's just, cook that fucking Cookie is just ignorant. She called the bitch Katie Lang. She called her a white bitch at one point. At a at, there was a video shoot later on. She just talked to her real bad. <laughs> just talked to her real bad. Um, so they're all in agreement with all that. They had to get Lucius' ass on out of here before he get in trouble and all that. So they move on with that. Cookie takes her ass to go see Lucius. Um, they're going back, back and forth trying to make a deal. She tells Lucius, you let us back on the radio and, um, out, Hakeem will do the video with Jamal that they want, that Jamal wanted to do. And they're going back and forth, back and forth, and she's saying, and don't pooch no more of my damn artists, and also stay away from my damn masters. So Lucius is going back and forth for her. Then he said, but wait a minute, I ain't never even said nothing about your damn masters. She said, no, Anika said you were after my masters. He said, Anika's a liar. That's what the bitch is best at. <laughs> so then he cracked Cookie's face and will say, um, yes, you you worry about her line, but that's why are you even working with her? And Cookie's face was pretty cracked. Then they got to going back and forth. She tells him, you know what? Um, we'll go ahead and do the do the video. And that'll look good. Look like we all sticking together instead of fighting with each other. So the fed, that'll be good for the feds and all that. Um, you need to give um 
Stay away from my masters. Like I said, give us the radio deal back. He won't give her a radio deal back. But they still agree to go ahead and do the video because that was basically, that was the little boy with the big shoes. That was his idea. So once I, he found out that the little boy with the big shoes, that was his idea, he was all happy about that because it was about some money. So whatever. Then she tells him, and the other thing is if you want to be in your grandchild's life, you better try to be more nice to your goddamn son and stop that bullshit. Talk about Andre. And uh, he ended up calling that bitch Grandma Moses. And she called him Grandpa. Talked about how fat his fucking stomach was. And she ended up getting ready to leave on up out of there. And he gonna say, yeah. She gonna say, you tell me what Grandma got an ass like this. Smacking her ass going on the door. I said, that goddamn cookie. She's a hot mess. But they just doing their thing. Arguing as usual. Next we got Jamal. He's doing a photo shoot for Rolling Stone. So we got him. He's half naked. The photographer got him half naked. The photographer is creepy as fucking hell. He's real creepy. Real creepy with a little white guy. And real squirrely looking. Michael's actually sitting there. Now the whole time, you can tell Michael's not feeling it, okay? Michael's sitting there looking. You can tell right away that this little guy is really sweet on Jamal. He really likes Jamal. And more so than just him with the, you know being talented and all that, he's all in it, so he got Jamal, he ends up having Jamal sitting at the keyboard, he all up under the keyboard, snapping pictures of Carrie, and all. I said, you know what, this is too much, and uh, Michael was not feeling the shit at all, Michael was like, this faggot is trying to be slick, and I'm gonna jump on her in a minute, I'm gonna cut her, so I laughed at that, and the more it went on with the photo shoot and all that shit, the guy, I think he kind of thinks that Jamal's like his muse. He's like so into Jamal. This shit's going to be a problem. But anyway, moving on. Um, Lucius and Andre have another conversation down at Leviticus off business times. Andre still fucking banging Lucius about getting back with Empire. Lucia still having these visions of his mammy with her goddamn psycho cut crazy shit and still pushing Andre away, but taking heed to the shit that Cookie said because he wants these grandbabies. So he's saying, you know, I want to be a good grandfather. I'm sorry, I, you know, whatever, whatever. And Andre's like, well, no, you know, I'm not going to never keep you out of your grandchild's life. Well, when he said that, Lucia just continued on with his bullshit, like, well, fuck it, motherfucker, I still ain't gonna deal with you, I'm gonna deal with my grandchild, because you're fucking crazy, and I'm not gonna fucking deal with your craziness, so, that was that, Andre still begging, Andre ends up asking him, if I could make all of this go away, would you let me back to Empire, so Lucius is kind of looking at him sad at, like, what the fuck is he talking about, he told me, if you can make all this shit go away, you can have anything you want, so I'm laughing. I said, oh, Lord, they done set Psycho Cut loose, honey. So um, a little bit after that, we actually see Andre and Rhonda. Now, Rhonda's sleeping peaceful because she ain't nothing but old wicked goddamn bitch. She, the bitch is maleficent. She over there just sleeping just as peaceful. But old Psycho Boy, he over there breaking out in cold sweats and carrying on, dreaming about Vernon and all that old bullshit. Then he ends up telling Rhonda that God was speaking to him. And she said, we're going to tell you, honey, we're going to jail fucking around with you. So he tells her, I can't tell you what he said, but some old shit about going to dig up the body and all this old bullshit. Rhonda's like panicking because she's thinking he's crazy and we're goddamn going to jail and that's all that's going to happen. So, um, he swore he would go to jail first before he let Rhonda be tied up in it. Anyway, so we see them go off with shovels and shit. They go and look for a body. So we don't see them for a little bit. So I'll come back to them with their bullshit. Um, let's go to the actual video shoot. They decide to go with Lucius's vision. Um, it's very militant. Um, it's like a Black Panther themed video with Jamal and uh, that damn Hakeem. In the midst of that, Cookie steps out for a minute from the video set, ends up getting arrested. They pick her right up from the street, told her they got a warrant for her arrest for not showing up and not showing up for court. And they take her and throw this fool in the damn car. She in the damn car talking about if I die in police custody, I did not commit suicide. Is somebody taping this? 
So I'm like, that girl's a damn fool. But they take her on down to the station. Finds out later, it's Roxanne and her bullshit with her fucking titties hanging out again. She tells Cookie, yeah, bitch, you didn't come to court. You jumped the turnstile. And then you didn't show up for court. Cookie was like, bitch, do I look like I catch the subway? She busts out pictures. It's that goddamn Porsche. Portia and jumped the, the, the turnstile at the subway, got in trouble, and gave Cookie's name. So Cookie told her, you know what? I see what you're doing. You playing. You playing hard. But fuck you and that tore up weave you got up top of your damn head. She took Cookie and told her, you can keep on trying to be as tough as you want to be. But Cookie, I will come after you and your goddamn babies. I will fuck with your sons, bitch. And she let her know. And then she said, what if I leak Andre's medical records, Cookie? Do you think he would kill himself? I said, well, this dirty bitch. And she was, she sitting up there with them titties on, just as confident with her nasty self. I said, okay, you're going to pay for that later, bitch. But that's okay. I thought that was real, real cold-blooded. But like I said, you're going to pay for it. Anyway, so Cookie's all held up at the police station. They still down at the, uh, the video shoot. That damn Lucius is trying to present Hakeem with this beat that he done wrote for him, trying to convince him to bring his ass back to Empire, and then told him, I'll let you, you come on back, I'll put you back on the radio, and you can, I'll even let you manage Valentina. So, um, Hakeem was kind of buying him for a second. Next thing you know, we go back into the actual video shoot, the photographer has shown up with a whole painting that he's done, this whole portrait he's done of Jamal. And it really was beautiful. It was a beautiful portrait. Very Andy Warhol-esque. Um, real nice. Again, uh, Lucius loved it. Absolutely loved it. Well, he was actually, you know, because you know he's very artistic, so he's all into it. Well, that just pissed Hakeem off. He like, but fuck that shit. That's an ugly motherfucker, and I ain't here for that. I came down here. Let's shoot this video so I can go. So the photographer says, you think it's ugly? He said, it's the ugliest fucking shit I ever seen in my life. So they have a couple words back and forth. Jamal tells the, the photographer, because see, Jamal does start grinning and skinning at the photographer making over him. He's going to say, he didn't mean that. He really didn't. He didn't mean it. He's going to say, yes, the fuck I did. That's the ugliest shit I ever seen. And they go back and forth. Lucia says something to Hakeem about being rude and the fact that it is a beautiful piece of art and all that. Jamal and him get, get ready to have some words. Lucia got to picking at a, the little boy with the big shoes and told him he was a mama's boy. And the whole point is he can't work without his mama being there. And that's why he signed the company over to Jamal because Jamal know how to work without his mother being right there. And he says, so maybe I should just call this whole thing off and we'll wait till your mommy gets back. Well, the little boy with the big shoes didn't like that. He went and grabbed a knife and cut the motherfucking picture. Just threw a temper tantrum and went over there and cut the damn picture. Because he's just stupid like he always is. So that damn Lucius is laughing because he pissed him off on purpose. He, he knew what he was doing. So they go into shooting and... um. They're doing what they're doing. And the next thing you know, is in the midst of them shooting, the little boy with the big shoes, they got a little little struggle, little part going on. He hit and got to hitting Jamal for real. And he pushed Jamal too hard one time, and Jamal knocked the fucking shit out of him. And the little boy with the big shoes going to grab a bat. Like he going to hit Jamal with the damn bat. Then he snaps all out, telling the people, why are y'all surprised? This family ain't never been a family. This, that, thing, and the other. And he takes and storms his punk ass out of there. Again, stupid, stupid McGloofit, as usual. So, he leaves out. And he was just mad because Jamal knocked his fucking socks loose. But anyway, so, um... We got all that going on. He takes his old dumb ass on down to some bar and he sees this other girl. So there he goes with his replacement for Valentina. It's some other Latina girl singing in Spanish. I said, well, you better find out if that host speak English first before you do all that. But that's where he was at with his ridiculous self. Um, Andre and Rhonda are out there trying to redig the fucking body up. Don't know where it is that they didn't actually put it with their stupid, confused asses. In the meantime, 
Lucius then pulled up with Thirsty. They thought it was the cops. It was Lucius and Thirsty. They didn't track them. They didn't put a tracker, Thirsty, to put a tracker on Andre's car. So they didn't follow them out there. Because he said, I knew something was wrong. He going to say, so tell me, son, what did you do to your uncle? You know, because he know Andre is just as shifty and shady as he, he ever been. So, fucking Rhonda, you know, she done fell over in the white woman's land. She done went and spilled her whole fucking guts and told Lucius, he was jumping on Andre and I cracked his fucking head to the white meat. This, that thing, and the other. Lucius looks at her and tells her, you saved my life. So, Lucius tells Andre and Rhonda, I'm proud of y'all, this, that, and the other. And they, uh, you know, hug it out. All that they go and they actually then got damn thirsty. You know, he ain't nothing but trouble. He got some detector to find the shit. They done found the body. The four of them dig the body up, take the body, put it in Thirsty's trunk. Andre get ready to go have his whole moment with God, telling Vernon how sorry he is that that happened to him and blah, 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 say blah, say blah. So Lucius is like, oh, okay, no problem. So he says, well, could y'all step away and I want to say something to the body too. This motherfucker leans over the goddamn truck and says, rotten hell, you snitch. <laughs> and slam the truck on down. Then he tells Andre, you know, I love you, son, this, that, and the other. Welcome back to Empire. A hot damn mess. Lucius already knows the police were desperate and that's what the, what the issue is. Now that they got Vernon's body, there ain't gonna be no case. That shit's, that's done. That's the only witness. It's done. It's finished. So, anyway, um, Anika comes, by this time, Cookie, because Cookie's down there, well, she's talking to Roxanne. Cookie was having some flashbacks about that time she spent in jail. And figured, I, I can't do this shit again. So, she ends up having Roxanne come back in there. Because Roxanne basically wanted Cookie to snitch on um, Lucius. That bitch, that Cookie that made up a whole story about Bonky fighting back and forth with uh, Lucius about the deal, about Apex Radio. All that shit was a lie. Bonky been dead for months. Before any of this shit went on. But she put all of the, the argument about the the Apex deal. And then as soon as Lucius got out of jail, he paid. He bought all of Apex. And Bonky was already dead and all that. So Roxanne actually bought right into it. It was like, now see, Cookie, was that so hard? Thinking that she didn't got what she wanted. But Cookie, that bitch done lied. That bitch had done lied. And she said... She said, yeah, it wasn't that bad. She said, and I'm sorry about what I said about your weave, too, honey. She's going to tell Cookie, and I like your wig, too. So they let Cookie's ass out. Cookie finally gets out. She ends up going back to the video shoot, but she done missed everybody by about two hours. They're all gone. But she had called Anika in the time in between and had her meet her there. So Anika's like, you know, I'm glad you called me to study the other. She said, yeah, I think we can get Lucius to study the other. She told her, she said, wait a minute, um, Boo Boo Kitty, honey. Lucius said he never said anything to you about my masters. So then Anika's standing there talking about, Lucius is lying. And he is lying, because he did. <laughs> she said, Lucius is lying. She said, yeah, I know. But it's you that I don't trust. Don't come to fuck around my studio no more here. So a nigga standing there crying because now she done fucked up. Lucius don't want her. Cookie don't want her. And she's standing up there out on her ear like she should be. Because anytime you fuck your man, son, you should be standing by yourself because you a snake bitch. And that's where snake bitches end up in holes by themselves. So, anyway, that was basically the end of the episode for tonight. Next week, I'm going to get with y'all. Um... Next week, you, they show, you know, I don't usually talk about previews from next week. But next week, they're going to have a whole spiritual warfare about Andre's belief and his spirituality versus Lucian and his non-belief in God. Baby, it's going to be a spiritual warfare. Folks are going to be pissed off. Child, the goddamn Christians are going to be up in arms again. Honey, they was mad about the gay stuff on this show. They're going to be mad as a motherfucker about this church shit that's getting ready to go down. They're going to be all kind of pearls clutched next week. I can't wait. Anyway, so that's that. Thumbs up, thumbs down. You guys know how that works. I will get with y'all next week when we go into a whole spiritual warfare thing. That's going to be some good shit. Anyway, all right. See you guys. Bye for now. Okay, guys, wait a minute. Just hold one second. I don't know how I forgot this, but the very end, the very end scene of um, Empire for this week. 
good old uh, Teddy girl. She come flying out the damn DA, Roxanne. She come flying on out of her house, you know, thinking she the shit, and she's really feeling herself about the shit that she got for Lucius and all this. And she gets in the car, she's on her phone, she's hangs up her cell phone, and sits her motherfucking ass down, and then she turns around, baby, and she found Vernon. Vernon's ass was sitting absolutely decayed, stinking, in the passenger seat of her car. I don't know how I forgot that, but yeah, so they even gave you all that. So that's how that episode actually ended. I can't believe I almost forgot that part. All right, y'all. See you next week. Bye.